I'm Michaela Strachan, wildlife and television presenter. Before you press the skip button, let me show you around one of my favourite places in South Africa. I've lived here for 20 years and these dramatic landscapes are food for the soul. On this trip, I'm going to be discovering the Western Cape, beyond Cape Town and the Winelands, up the west coast, off the beaten track and into the Cedarburg Mountains. So expect breathtaking landscapes, cosmic stargazing, stress-free e-biking and heaps of other things to discover. My trip starts in Paternoster, which is one of the oldest fishing villages along the west coast. And it's known for these picturesque whitewashed fishermen's cottages. It's a place of calm and tranquility. And I've been told the best way to see it is on one of these. These are e-bikes, they're so cool. I've done a lot of cycling before, but never on an e-bike. But with their fat tires and their motors, that means that cycling along the sand is a pleasure. The e-bike tours take in the ocean, the village life, and then the wildlife in Cape Columbine Nature Reserve. Look at that. Fantastic colony of Cape fur seals on the rocks. So there must be thousands of them. But I tell you, if you really want to get close to the marine life, you're probably better off going on a kayak. And then who knows, if you're lucky, you may even get close to dolphins and whales. Now this gorgeous little bay is called Titty's Bay. Apparently named after that hill with a rock right on the top. <laughs> Interesting fact about this lighthouse, the Cape Columbine Lighthouse. It's built in 1936. It would have been the first lighthouse visible to European ships as they rounded Africa. Little fact there. There are plenty of active things to do in Paternoster, but the general feel of the village is relaxed. A place to unwind and let the ocean lifestyle wash the stress from your shoulders. Take the time to get your feet in the sand and stroll down the pristine beach. Mooch around the many quirky shops or check out the creativity at the art shed. Oh, wow, look at that. That is South Africa's national flower, the protea, made out of the pages of an old book. That is brilliant. Enjoying good food and wine plays a huge part of the Paternoster experience. You can't visit Paternoster without doing a little bit of wine tasting. And this is the Paternoster Wine and Tasting Lounge. And they showcase vineyards from all over South Africa. And today, they're doing sparkling wine, which is called, as you can see on the bottle, uh, Method Cap Classique. And this one is the one I'm trying. And I love the label on that. <laughs> the Sparkle Horse. <laughs> certainly sparkles. <laughs> Apparently this is the only wine bar on the west coast between Namibia and Cape Town, which makes it pretty unique. There's a dazzling array of places to eat in Paternoster, and as you might expect, there's no shortage of wonderful seafood menus on offer. If you're looking for a restaurant with a view, well, you don't get much better than this. This is called Die Strandlopper, and Strandlopper means beach walker. It's about half an hour away from Paternoster, but it's incredibly popular with locals and tourists. It's a set menu, it's 10 courses, so make sure you come hungry. You could bring your own booze, or there is a bar here, and make sure you've got the whole afternoon, because it's the sort of place that you're going to spend hours at. No trip up the West Coast would be complete without a visit to the West Coast National Park. It's a protected lagoon surrounded by white dunes, rare fainboss, green wetlands and unbounded waves. It really is a beautiful place and people come here to take a drive, have a picnic, have a swim, maybe go for a hike. But I've come here to do a bit of bird watching. Lovely to see some pink flamingos, but if you come here in the spring, then this park is transformed into a carpet of colour. Heading inland from the coast, you arrive in the Cedarburg Mountains, a stunning landscape and one of my favourite places in South Africa. If you want to escape the chaos of the world, feed your soul and connect with the beauty of the natural environment, then this is the perfect place to come. It's not a wildlife reserve. You come here to look at the stunning rock formations, the awe-inspiring red sandstone, the endless scenes of wilderness, and enjoy the utter tranquility. 
There's a range of places to stay in the Cedarburg, from hip campsites to unique luxury lodges. Kakakama really is a romantic place to stay. This is one of their cave rooms. Look at it. It's absolutely gorgeous. Love the swans. What about this? A night within the rocks, under the stars. Come on, you don't get any more romantic than that. Wow, look at these. The Cedarburg is famous for this rock art, which was done by the sand people, otherwise known as the Bushmen. They tell all sorts of stories and they're quite spiritual. It's incredible to think that these were painted probably over a thousand years ago. The rocks may be the stars of the show in the daytime, but at night it's the stars themselves that shine brightly. And the Cedarburg is the most amazing place to do a bit of stargazing. So if you're visiting Cape Town, make sure you take time to go up the west coast and into the Cedarburg because you'll come back rejuvenated. <laughs>